Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan for my P8 on the Eva and Franco Matias um, reading. Um, so, first off, with their whole stealing, quote unquote, of the hell.com website and uploading it to their 01.org website, um, I think that what they were pretty much trying to like show was uh, that there shouldn't be these copyright and uh, ownership laws uh, pertaining to anything that's on the you know the internet because it's there for sharing. I, you know, I think that's what they're they were trying to do. Um, you know, it was a password protected website, and they which only limited was limited to certain people. Whereas they just wanted to blow the whole thing up and show everyone, you know, anyone that wanted to come go and watch it or see what was there, you know, they could. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, now there's a difference between hackers and what they do. You know, a lot of times hackers are singling someone out, um, a big name corporation, trying to bring them down because they can, um, you know, as a kind of as a, as a means of power. And I, what they're doing is they were just trying to allow more people to view uh, something that someone was trying to prevent everyone from kind of kind of eliminating the whole elitist complex that I think um, password protecting a website you know does and I, I think that's you know there's nothing wrong with that um, allowing people to you know go and search and find this information that they want to find um, you know it is what our technology is I mean there's no doubting that you can't prevent um, people nowadays from finding out anything that they want and sites like Facebook where people share exactly you know their personal information you know if they're willingly sharing all that then I mean how are you gonna put laws and stipulations on what a person can and can't um, see so that's pretty much the, the main difference between them and hackers is they're doing it for the purpose of just allowing people to you know share and see what they want to Whereas hackers are trying to uh, usually have a political agenda or some other means of doing bringing down um, someone that they're trying to. Now the whole Nike thing. At first, I you know I just looked at the pictures and I didn't really understand what was going on. So I was kind of like dumbfounded by it and I was like, what the hell? As anybody would, because I have a park. I live right next to a park and I wouldn't want some big name corporation, you know, uh, advertising there that they were going to take it over and basically make it theirs. You know, I, I thought, just thought that was ridiculous and I kind of offended me, you know, when I saw that. But, you know, then you read and you, you see that the, it was basically the opposite of that and it was just kind of a uh, making fun, making a mockery of, you know, Nike and you know the big name corporations that basically you know put all these subliminal messages in these commercials you know we wonder why we're hungry for McDonald's well it's because you know subconsciously we didn't really you know pay distinct attention to it but you know their commercial for advertising their burgers and fries has been playing you know five times in the last hour so you know it's things like that. I, you know, just bringing people to an awareness. I think that's what the whole uh, Nike thing accomplished. You know, um, it, it wasn't so much about um, trying to offend people, and you know, but it was just more about you know creating an awareness, uh, getting people to think, and you know, you get people to think, and that's that's a really powerful thing to do. You know, so we don't just get herded like cattle and just follow all these you know, uh, this propaganda to make us believe something that we, you know, have basically been programmed since birth to do, you know, nowadays with all of this uh, new technology, TVs and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's it's a thin line that we tread, but um, I think their, their work is basically making people aware of that line. Um, now, the thing about the Second Life Avatar um, is, uh, I have two things to say about it. Yes, it is kind of like a portrait in that we get to create our own um, personal identity, however we see fit to do it, um, as you know, our ideal um, bodies or um, being whatever we want to that we can't normally do in real life. You know, it basically gives people um, a means of vicariously living through, you know, this made-up person 
who is in representation of ourselves. And so, you know, people get to be a lot more outspoken, whereas in real life they might not be. And they get to be things other than they're not. Now, it's also dangerous, though, too, because, you know, people, people's identity is hidden. It's kind of like a cloak. And so, you know, people can actually do some heinous crimes and do some really terrible things, you know, say some really terrible things because they don't have to be accountable for it. So, it, again, just that, you know, that line that we tread on. Um, the whole thing with their synthetic performances, um, you know, re recreating um, people's uh, real life uh, self-expression art in Second Life. Now, I'm going to say it's good and bad. Um, you know, it's good because it reintroduces people and uh, with, you know, these past... Um, exhibits but it uh, modernizes them and um, basically gets to reinterpret them um, you know by bringing them to light again so people get to you know see and you know, more generations get to see what exactly um, was happening in the past and then it, it, again it gets them to think and gets them to talk about these things um, <laughs> good and bad uh, uh, again it's just that with those, um, by doing these displays in game, people, well, one, it can, uh, it kind of dumbs down the real meaning, I guess you could say, because you're taking something that was done in real life, and in a way, you're, you know, making it, um, you're making it kind of more of a cartoon. Uh, you can kind of say that it's, it takes away from the, uh, um, the seriousness um, of that you know, by uh, per performing these arts, uh, performance arts pieces in uh, Second Life. But, um, I mean, hey, you know, what are you going to do? At least it's getting it out there. Um, but again, it, it, for the people that know what's going on, you know, they can appreciate that fact and they can actually, they were talking about how, you know, the um, art performance arts, the, the, uh, the performance art piece that they were doing where they have the two naked people you know, standing in the doorway, and then, you know, what does a person do? And then, so they, you know, the people that knew what was going on, they would, their avatars you know, would take off their clothes, become naked, and then choose if they were going to, you know, be face-to-face -face with the male or face-to-face -face with the female. So, uh, you know, I think in that sense it's good, um, because people are able to participate more, you know, um, in Second Life be behind their aliases where, you know, they might not do do so in real life. You know, and then I thought it was funny too how they had the people who didn't know about the performance pieces who were protesting on their Second Life avatars. I just thought that was funny. Um, but one thing that can be said is that all their art pieces, the uh, Matias art pieces, are I think there's a central theme um, among you know being with uh, the originality and uh, ownership, reproduction, and uh, creativity and like copyright plagiarism uh, you know all those um, they're all themes that are incorporated into their work but I think the main one um, is awareness I, I think that's what really what their main central theme is you know it, which entails all of those things I just mentioned um, so you know they want to create make people aware of all of these uh, different realizations of art um, they use it as a means of you know introducing new ideas and concepts getting people you know familiar with things that they might not necessarily feel comfortable with but again it's still it, it, at least they're aware of it now and they get to decide what they want to do with it um, uh, at the end it was interesting learning about you know how they were talking about flogging a dead horse and um, the sex pistols and how you know the manager and the designer were the last two uh, people working on that record but they were promoting it like the band was still you know alive and hip and together when in fact it was just those two people behind it and you know and they were saying that that's kinda what they were doing with their whole uh, United We Stand movie you know they did all the groundwork passed out all the fly flyers uh, you know, put up the movie posters, create all this hype. And the only thing they did that they didn't create was the movie itself. And I, you know, along with the Nike uh, project and all these things, it's just getting people aware um, to you know follow up and check you know 
check on this information that we're being given, not just to sit there and take it. You know, like how the newspapers, you know, were reporting that Nike was really going to take over the park, that you know, the square in Vienna. But they, if they would have researched, they would have found out that it was just a hoax and it actually had nothing to do with the Nike Corporation. And you know, again, that awareness, that central theme, and you know, that's pretty much what they were saying that they were doing themselves is you know um, reanimating um, re sorry reanimation through communication and appearance is just taking a previously done work and tweaking it changing it um, you know um, something adding to it something that the uh, original owner author didn't entail uh, or foresee happening and you know, so you're getting the image, you're getting the uh, message from the original creator, and then some. So I, I just feel that you know, they're doing a, they're doing a good thing, but in a, just a different and unique way, you know. But it's all about that awareness, getting people to think, to question, to I don't know, not just be little lemmings, you know, jump falling each other off the cliff. It's just all that awareness and I, I think in today's world especially with uh, technology making us you know move as fast as we do it, it's a big deal you know um, technology it, it's a good thing because we're able to pick up on things a lot faster uh, learn things share things with people that we you know might not be able to ever have come into contact with without it but the downside of technology is that I think it's just a uh, having we as people using technology we become too dependent on it and then we just start uh, almost required require it as a necessity and it's not and it's just there's a lot of things that we're going to lose out in lose out on um, for instance I can't really um, work on a car as well as my father could because you know it was technology that they had to learn and they they were taught in school you know nowadays we have computers and the internet so we don't have those classes in place and you know so it's there for you, you if you want to learn it but it's not necessarily something that's going to be taught to you just because it needs to you know so it's just <sighs> good and bad again um, but I, I really don't think that that's the uh, right way to go um, in terms of technology it makes our life easier but it just it makes us too dependent and I think that with what Ava and Franco are doing is just they're making people aware of that fact. And with that, that concludes my Project 8. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. See you guys in class. Bye.